Hey, what's up? This is DJ Thunderous. I'm here with Cor Razek. As you know, he also has several names. He's also known as the Bastard Child in New York City. What's up? Chilling like a villain. <laughs> Can you let everyone know how you, how the band was created? Well, I've 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 been this entity known as uh, Cor Razek for for many years. Uh, you know, playing the uh, New York City scene. Lower East Side glam scene and the uh, underground Queens New York scene, home of the original Ramones. Um, and the lineup, as you know, it started in 2016. Um, everybody, well, most of everybody in the, in, in the lineup had been veterans of the local scene and, and various bands. We'd all played together in different bands. Um, and, uh, you know, Alex and uh, Louie um, were in a band called Cracked Alice. Um, and Louis was also in a band called Tired Wings, which Korazic, you know, uh, played pre. And again, there was many different incarnations of the Korazic, uh, band. Um, but this, to me, this is the real band. The, these are the guys that, uh, stuck it out through and through, the ones that were really willing to take risks, um, and really get the brand on the road. Um, so we, we formed in, uh, spring of 2016, and that's right around the time we put out the first, uh, three songs. Uh, Can't Stop, Bitterat, and Spellbound, which would, of course, uh, go on to be on the debut record, Vengeance Overdrive. Um, and then we slowly just kind of started uh, doing some bigger New York shows, some tri-state shows. We did Rocklahoma, um, and the rest is history. But yeah, the, the, the band, as you know, it started in uh, 2016, and it was really just through word of mouth of, you know, uh, Core was working on getting a new band and going to be doing some festival dates, and these guys' uh, schedule it opened up, and uh, it was just a, a perfect fitting. That's cool. Now, who are the current members? I've noticed your band sounds really solid right now, and I have to say that killer. Yeah, um, well, it's, a, it's, it's the same guys from 2016, so oh. it's obviously myself, yep. uh, you know, Core on vocals, uh, Andre Petorsky on guitars, Alex Gill on guitars, and uh, Louis Drums. Um, and we're, uh, you know, we, we sometimes tour without a bass player. Uh, we have our friend Carlo Weiss, who uh, was actually one of the original guitar players in the old uh, lineups. Uh, he's filled in on bass on occasion. He's, uh, he's actually in the video for Guilty as Charged. Um, and we're actually talking to um, uh, a couple of new people, actually, that will probably uh, play bass with us whenever we're allowed to do shows again. Yeah, I know. It so, kind of sucks that you can't go anywhere or do anything, you know? Well, yeah, for sure. Well, you know, we're uh, we're doing the best we can to stay busy. You know, I, 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 think, I think everybody for a while in this pandemic, a lot of people got depressed and everybody kind of hunkered down. Um, and I think now, going into almost month three, I think everyone's just kind of over it. Um, everyone's done their precautions, and I and and I'm glad to see that you know I was probably the only one that was really trying to still push things through, like with the new video and things like that. Um, but it looks like now the band is finally on the same page, and 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 everyone's working on demos. We're doing home demos. We're going back and forth with 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 uh, material and discussing stuff for the future. So, um, so now the band is finally like starting to work together again, which is nice. That is cool. And you like to go live anyways. You're always live talking about stuff, you know, and letting everybody know what's going on. And I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, you know, I uh, I keep it real. You know, obviously Core is a character. And I, I do think at some point I will start doing some more uh, Facebook Lives where I'm in character. That's something that I do want to do. Uh, but a lot of times I just keep it real, no makeup, just hanging out on the deck or whatever. And I will just uh, go live and, and talk to the fans and just see how everybody's doing how everyone's feeling. If I'm having a bad day, I'll let them know. They're there for me. I'm there for them. You know, it's a little, a little corny, but it's, but it's real, man. You know, the music brings us together. You know, uh, if I, if I, if I wasn't Korazic and I wasn't doing music, I don't know if I would have, uh, the network that I do. I don't know if I would have, uh, the community, uh, of support that I do, you know? So, um, you know, we've tried to keep in touch with everybody and with the internet, you're able to do that now. So it's, uh, it's, it's a really cool thing. Oh yeah, you sure are. And, um, how did you become the bastard child of New York City and receive the stage name Cor Razek? So the Cor Razek name I created many, many years ago uh, in the old uh, Queen scene back in the day. I had a band called Barely Legal, um, and then I went from that 
uh, into a band called Circus from Hell, which was a very much a horror rock uh, band. Uh, it's definitely where I got some of my some of the roots that I use today. As far as you know, uh, everything I wrote was uh, like horror movies, you know, and I, I've I've kind of taken that style of songwriting into the next uh, dimension, of course, as far as being theatrical and storytelling. Uh, and Quasi was just kind of an offshoot of things. Uh, in high school, people used to call me Hardcore. That was my nickname because uh, I, I used to do backyard wrestling and, and uh, wrestling in the ring and stuff like that. <laughs> so one of my friends named me. Yeah, so one of my friends named me Hardcore, and I was like, you know, maybe uh, maybe I could just call myself Core with a K. That's a little different, you know. And uh, Rozik was just an offshoot of my my real last name. And uh, just kind of play on words with that, you know, taking Roz, which is which is part of my name, uh, and thinking, you know, I want this character to be kind of like like an Alice Cooper character. You know, what is he? He's sick. You know, so I was like Rozick. <laughs> so so that yeah, so that so that's and, and again, I, I I thought I made such a good stage name. I was like, I think I'm done with my creativity. I don't think I could possibly come up with a band name or something that would be another cliche band name. I thought the name stood out very strongly, so that, that's kind of why we're, we're Um And uh, The Bastard Child of New York City, I'm not really sure where that where that came from. Uh, yeah. I mean, I definitely came up with that myself. Uh, I, I think as, as things got further on uh, in the local scene, there was a lot of drama. Uh, a couple of years ago with me, a lot, a lot of rumors about me. There was a lot of people that weren't very happy. I felt like I was the president, you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I just thought to myself, well, you know, I'm misunderstood. All these people are talking smack. People are trying to sabotage me. I am an only child. I feel like an outcast. I'm the bastard child in New York City. Because I'm like, well, New York City doesn't love me, but I'm still from here. I'm still proud to be here. I'm still representing. And I, and I, and I think that's kind of where the moniker came from. You know, it's and, and it's and it's really cool because we're um, not to do a spoiler, but I'm very excited. We just started working on a brand new song that's actually called "Bastard Dialed," and I th- I think it's really gonna I think it's really gonna rock. Oh, see now you got me going. Now you are really gonna want me to hear yeah. that? Come on, that's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you did mention some of your um, influences. Who are your personal and band influences? Actually, you know, musically. <clears throat> Yeah, that, that, that's an interesting list, you know. Uh, sometimes I, I, I draw a blank on that. I mean, I would say from a performance standpoint, Alice Cooper, you know, David Lee Roth, those are the two guys that obviously, uh, you know, uh, come to mind. Um, you know, musically, uh, I'm very influenced, uh, you know, by bands like Megadeth and Overkill. And uh, some of the 80s hair metal stuff like Dokken. I'm a huge Dokken fan. I've really, uh, you know, studied, uh, you know, Don's vocals, the vibrato, uh, Judas Priest. Um, I love me a lot of good uh, new metal, you know, Disturbed. Uh, my friends uh, in the band Dope love those guys. Bobaflex, Ben Sevenfold, both my Valentine. Uh, you know, I love classic, uh, you know, 70s punk like the Ramones, um, Offspring. Uh, the first band I got into was Queen, so uh, I don't think Queen musically sound. We don't sound anything like Queen, but Freddie Mercury as a front man is just very inspiring. Um, and I would say in recent years I've uh, really become a huge Blue Oyster Cult fan. Um, I don't know if my music reflects that, but as far as uh, you know, their their songs are very odd. They, they do a lot of songs about sci-fi and these really interesting futuristic uh, stories. So I've, I've really been diving into that kind of thinking man's type of music, uh, which, which uh, you know, we, we do a lot of that stuff. You know, all our songs are some sort of a, a storyline. So I've been kind of getting a lot of inspiration from, uh, you know, how uh, Blue Oyster Cult writes. Um, you know, but uh, pretty much from, from, from yesterday to today, I, I, I kind of take a little bit of everything and just kind of put it in a blender, whether it's, you know, whether it's, uh, you know classic uh, bands or, you know, I'm always taking a look and seeing what's going on now. We never try to blatantly uh, imitate anybody, but you know, if I if I see you know some band uh, that's hot that's doing some sort of a sound, um, you know, I might take a little something from it and, and make it my own. Well, you definitely make your music your own, that's for sure. And you know, 
that's what makes it so cool to have you guys on board here because we like your music and we can't forget your name. I mean, it's Cor Razik, as you had said. And right. you have just different music. It's not the same as everyone else. And even when you're on stage, you're yourself. Absolutely. Um, like I said, I, I, I really come from that, that school of uh, Alice Cooper as far as, uh, you know, really truly being a character. You know, I really transform into, into being the bastard child when I go on stage. Um, and, you know, there, 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 there's some... Sh- I think what's really cool about a Korazic show is that you never really know what you're going to get. I mean, you know, the, the set list might be a little bit predictable. We only got, like, one record, you know. But... Um, you never know what Core is going to do on stage. You know, there, there's some days where I can get a little preachy or I can become a motivational speaker. Or I could do a stand-up bit. Um, I never really know what's going to happen. It really just depends on, on how Core is feeling, you know. Um, but uh, usually there's some, usually I say something funny or interesting <laughs> at every show. <laughs> That's funny. So Vengeance Overdrive, how was, what was the process of that? And, you know, how did you get it to come out and release? So, uh, like I said, in 2016, the band that, that you know and love just got together, um, and we put out a three-song sampler, um, and we already had the name Vengeance Overdrive. I, I knew that was a great, uh, you know, um, title, and uh, we just kind of put that out, and then from there, we made a couple more songs, and as time went on, it was like, you know what? Again, me being a fan of Alice Cooper and BOC and other bands like that, I was always a fan of concept records. I always wanted that to be kind of my thing. So as time went on, I'm like, you know what? I see how these songs connect. I can find ways to make it connect even more. Um, and the story just started kind of writing itself. It all just slowly came together, uh, and we decided to just make it a full concept record, which is, again, it's really what I want to do from, from, from Jump Street. You know, So we, we, we put it all together. Um, and then we were just kind of sitting on it, and I, I said, well, let's see if we can get a label involved, and uh, Cleopatra Records was interested, and uh, they put it out uh, two summers ago. That's cool. Congratulations on that as well. You know, it's tough to get into a Thank good you. record label. Absolutely. All right, we're going to check out a first track here. Here's Guilty as Charged. Crank it up. <laughs>
to chuckle a little bit when I speak of guilty as charged because I did see the video for that. Can you explain that song and the video concept? Oh, uh, yeah, I could blatantly explain it. So, <laughs> Guilty as Charged is uh, is the last song on the record of Vengeance Overdrive, and it pretty much wraps up the whole story. Um, like I said, there was a lot of, uh, you know, Core had a lot of, had a lot of enemies, and, uh, you know, uh, there was a crazy ex-girlfriend who was basically trying to ruin his career. Um, so, essentially, you know, she's Guilty as Charged, and, you know, we've saved the best. For last, she's basically the last enemy for me to take down. So, uh, you know, that's essentially, um, you know, what the song is about, and it really just talks about Core, you know, saying I'm I'm guilty for being myself, and you guys hate what you don't understand. Um, and I just hope with you uh, trying to do all this negativity that you just you make me a star, that you make me famous. <laughs> you know, as well that um, they're pretty much doing. <laughs> exactly. Know? Uh, and it's, and as far as the premise for the video, um, unfortunately there was no premise. Uh, to be honest with you, what happened was we, uh, we started filming the video. And as you can see in the video, we look great. You know, we, we look really good. And um, there was going to be a storyline to it, but it just got to the point where when everything shut down um, and we had no resources, obviously, we just said, you know what? We haven't put out a video in a while. People are home. People want to be able to see something. People want to be entertained. Um, you know, the, the Vengeance Overdrive cycle is, you know, it's coming towards an end at this point. Um, <clears throat> let's just make the best of the, of the footage that we we got and, and just put it together and do the best we can with it. So the video was going to have more of an involved storyline, but uh, because of the coronavirus, everything shut down. We weren't able to film anymore. So... So that's why the video is pretty much a straight-ahead uh, performance video. Originally, it was going to have some some sort of subplot, but you know, we just didn't get a chance to do it, and we didn't want to, you know, we didn't want to sit on it. So uh, well, it came out pretty what, well, that's actually. What you get. Yeah, and it came out actually Thank pretty you. good. You know, I think it goes with the core Razik concept. Anyway, you know, for sure, you are who you yeah. are. So since 2016, exactly. you, you've toured out. Yep. You've toured all over. How was that, and where did you go, and who did you get to play with over the years? Uh, so we, we went almost everywhere. There's still a couple of states that uh, we haven't had the pleasure of visiting or rather playing. We've driven through almost everything. Um, uh, we, uh, well, our first big tour was with, uh, with this band called Bunny the Bear. Yep. And uh, we went all went all across the Midwest with them. Obviously, they're, they're Buffalo guys. We went up to Buffalo and stuff. Um, great guys. They really help us kind of break into what it's all about on the road. Um, we've done a handful of festivals in uh, Blue Ridge and West Virginia. We've done Rocklahoma many times. We went up to Laconia Fest in New Hampshire. That was an interesting situation. Yeah, it was. Isn't um, that where you were a roadie? I, I, yeah, I, uh, well, I, I played three times, I, I played three times that week, but behind the scenes things fell apart, and they asked me to, uh, to do, uh, to be like a stage manager and kind of help coordinate stuff. Um, so yeah, I was like, ah, oh, what the hell, I'll, I'll stick around. I mean, it, it, it was a fun experience, but it was just a total mess. Um, and, uh, you know, we've, we've done a couple of national tours. We went on tour with OTEP, uh, for, for a summer. And that was our first real big break, and that we did that just as uh, Vengeance was coming out. So that was a great opportunity for us. And uh, we also did a two-month tour with uh, Anita Strauss, who's Alice Cooper's guitar player. We did that last year, and uh, that was just phenomenal. That was just uh, a great experience. Anita and her whole crew was great. And um, it's great. The whole Alice Cooper camp uh, kind of knows of Korozik now, so mission accomplished on that. Yeah. Um, you know, we really you know, got more fans from, from doing that one. Um, and pretty much in between all that, we've gone on our, we've gone on the little solo tours, you know, no place is too big or small for us. You know, we'll just go out there and get in everybody's face and uh, just, just keep it real. That's awesome. All right, we're going to check out your second track here is Can't Stop, Won't Stop. Crank it up.
said that she won't make it But I can't stop Can't stop, won't stop. Let's talk about that track a little. I have to say it's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know how, you know, it's funny because I, I, I think that was always the song that I was politicking. Um, I, I think my band may have had different uh, opinions on, you know, you know, what's the single or what, you know, what's the best song on the record or whatever. Um, but I just really like that song because I, I feel like that's one of the few songs on the record that's a little bit on the brighter side. Most of the other songs are very dark and uh, they're, just, they're just more serious, I guess. Um, I, I, I felt this song had a good groove to it, and I felt like it was more of kind of a uh, kind of a crossover song. It, it's still metal, but it's not uh, it's not too abrasive. Um, and I really like the chorus a lot. I think the chorus is, 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 a, is a great sing-along. So I, I've always been really uh, proud of that song. I think um, and I find uh, that, yeah. Go ahead. I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, and I, <laughs> go ahead. I was you gonna, go first. <laughs> you go second. Um, I was going to say it, it's like a combination, that song, to me. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Um, so I find that when I, when I speak to casual fans, maybe fans that aren't typically fans of metal or maybe don't know much about Koraz, like I find a lot of times that Can't Stop seems to be like the song that they gravitate uh, first. You know, maybe it's a little bit more easy on the ears for some new listeners or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but, but, you know, uh, with that said, I really wanted to make a fun video for you know, I felt like Mistress was kind of like the, uh, the horror movie, and I kind of wanted Can't Stop to be like the low-budget comedy, um, and just make it really wacky. I mean, because you see bands like, you know, the Beastie Boys and the Foo Fighters, and uh, granted, those guys have budgets and stuff, but um, those are the type of bands that wouldn't take themselves too seriously, and they would just do some real wacky videos, mm -hmm. where you're like, wow, did you see that? That's crazy, you know? So that's kind of what I wanted to do. It's like, what core is running around with a rubber chicken, and there's a guy in a monkey suit? You know, that was hysterical, uh, the monkey suit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's just, uh, it just, just, just kind of weird and random, and that, that's kind of my humor, and, you know, some people don't get it, you know, but that's okay. Um, but, yeah, we shot it literally in a day. During the day, we, we shot it all by Creedmoor Psychiatric Center, <laughs> which is kind of kind of funny because we're, we're over there dressed up like, like a bunch of wackos and, I don't know, they must have thought we were from the hospital or something, because, like, nobody really really messed with us. They probably went to the other know? side of the street. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I think, I think, that, I think that's kind of like the inside joke to it. I think, you know, you can interpret that video however you want to. But I think in my mind I was kind of like, well, 
in the beginning of the video, you see me coming around the bend. It's like I, I basically got out of the, the psychiatric center. And I don't know, are, are all those other characters, you know, other people from the mental hospital? Or, or am I just, like, seeing stuff? You know, it's like, I don't know. You know, it's kind of open to interpretation, you know. And the guy with the painting, I, I, I totally got that. Isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> guys trying yeah, to, yeah that's uh that's my that's my free uh that's my friend Nate from uh the band Imbolg. Uh he's <laughs> he's got a great gothic band from uh, the local scene and uh he's got his catchphrase it's called he says that's burnt. That's like his catchphrase. He always says that's burnt. Uh-huh. And um and uh you know pretty much <laughs> um he, he, you know pretty much we just thought it'd be funny from the wear a shirt that says that's burnt and and so uh, a painting. He just randomly had that paint. <laughs> he just randomly had that painting in his his because he's burnt. He just randomly had that painting in his trunk of his car. I I, I don't know. You know. You know. It, it was really just kind of like what can what, what do we have lying around that's just f weird and random and you know some things were planned and other things were just kind of like done on the spot. Now, did you do the chicken talking on the phone on the spot or was that planned? Uh, no, that that. that <laughs> that was planned. See, okay. uh, for any real hardcore fans that have been to like a, a recent core show, especially on the Nita tour, um, <coughs> they know they they know uh, who Gargonzola is, and that that's the green rubber chicken that was in the video. He, you can always see him at the uh, at the merch booth. I, I I usually use him to get people's attention because he makes a lot of noise, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so yeah, that was that was like a real like hidden Easter egg. Like if you if you really like know if you'd been on like the last like tour or so and like you'd been to our you would be like, Oh, there's that crazy rubber chicken that they're always playing with. <laughs> Cora must be around. <laughs> <laughs> that's why Yeah, you know, I'm always I'm always, I'm always choking my chicken and that's what we would do. I would say, Hey, you wanna choke my chicken, pay a dollar, you know? <laughs> yep, there you go, choke it. <laughs> that's hysterical. Yeah, That's it, man. Yeah. All right, we're going to check out your last track here. Here's Bitter Rat. Crank it up. Yeah. 
why did you choose Bitter Rat for this album? I have always liked that song, but well, I, I well, I think well, bitter to me, Bitter Rat is you know it's funny we're talking about it now, looking back on it. Bitter Rat is pretty much the uh, what's the right word for it? Uh, uh, I think that I think that's the origin of the whole concept of the record. It, it all starts with Bitter Rat. Uh, Bitter Rat was was written about uh, an ex-band member uh, that really was really pushing that whole anti-core campaign in New York City for a very long time. Mm-hmm. So that song was written specifically about that person and everyone around them that was you know doing all this stuff. Um, so, you know, without Bitter Rat, I mean, there probably would be no Vengeance Overdrive, you know, now that I think about it. Uh, you know, so a- so it kind of, it needed to be on the record. I mean, that's really like where it all started, you know? Yeah. Now, um, all the vocal takes on the album, like, I had a question for you. Oh, the phone calls and the, the little blurps that you have on the album. Yeah, the skits. Yeah, the skits. Yeah. What was, what were you thinking about them? Well, uh, you know, I, I again, being that it was a, you know, being that it was a concept record, I just uh, wanted to do skits. I thought that was kind of an old school thing. Uh, it was very reminiscent of like Eminem and St. Clown Posse, how they would do skits on their records. Right. I just thought it was a good way to like really, uh, you know, put the story together and fill in whatever gaps couldn't be conveyed just through the songs. Well, I thought they were pretty cool because I, I like the telephone call one. I like, you know, several of them. They're pretty cool. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, the, 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 the phone call before Bitter Rat was actually a reenactment because for a while I was actually getting prank phone calls and uh, people were uh, leaving me voice messages pretending to be Batman. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Only hey, you. This is Batman. Yeah. You suck. Yeah, no, really, no, yeah, really. So I said, all right, well, I'll just make Batman the Bitter Rat and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just do that. Um, wow. But yeah, I mean, but yeah, the skits really help push forward the so- uh, the, the the songs and the story. You know, uh, it, you know, look lo- looking back at it now, um, you know, it's not a very long record, which I think is good. Um, but you know, you, you really can listen to it from start to finish with the skits, and it re- it really uh, it really puts you on a nice journey. Yeah, it does. That's for sure. So anyone out there who needs to hear this album, you have to buy it because it's real cool. I saw it's on vinyl now too, and. The artwork is excellent. Yeah, Joey James is the man. Um, he's the one that does all our artwork. And, yeah, it, it's official. It, uh, Cleopatra Records did put out a, a limited edition vinyl for it. Um, and uh, you can buy it on Cleopatra Records. But I, from my understanding, I think in a month or so, it will also officially be on Amazon if people want to just pre-order it on Amazon. You can do that. Um at least with Amazon, it's free shipping, so I think price-wise, it kind of comes out about the same thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, it really, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I, I think the vinyl is the way to go. If, if you're a vinyl head and you have uh, a good uh, sound system, I, I, I would suggest getting the vinyl. You know, the artwork looks great, you know, in, in that size. Um, and we, we personally remixed and, and remastered uh, uh, the, the tracks for vinyl. So it is a it is a legit vinyl um, because you know for anyone that studies vinyl they'll know that you know sometimes some of the newer vinyls uh, they tend to be a direct uh, rip from the, the the mixes that are basically on a CD or would be on an MP3. So you know when you play the vinyl like yeah it sounds all right but you're essentially just playing a CD on wax. Mm-hmm. Whereas um, you know whereas if you got those old school vinyls they were they were they were mixed to for the vinyl to pick up the sounds the way it's supposed to. And uh, it it really sounds better on vinyl. I mean, there's certain things that really pop out uh, musically on the vinyl that that don't quite hit like they do on a CD. That's cool. We'll have to pick one up and hear the difference. Hell yeah. For anyone out there, where else can they purchase your merchandise? I know you have kids' merchandise. You have T-shirts that are left. I don't know what's left right now in stock, but where can they find all that? Yeah, well, I I may... I made too many T-shirts for Andy, and he doesn't want them. So now I got to try to sell them to some kids. Um, and uh, that, that's a joke because he's small. But yeah. uh, anyway, um, so as you notice, most of my band is shorter than me, so <laughs> it's kind of 
But, um, yeah, no, we have a couple of extra small uh, shirts and hoodies. We've got lots of gear, all shapes and sizes, and we're actually working on making some new bandanas and hats, which you can rock to the supermarket during the pandemic. Um, and you can get all that stuff at corazic.bigcartel.com. And uh, it's a cool thing, man, because, you know, you're really supporting the band. We're still very much a mom-and-pop, you know, uh, organization. So, you know, when you order a T-shirt, the money goes directly to the band, and I personally uh, mail it out to you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here today. I do have one more question that one of our listeners always asks at the end of the interview. If It's from Vicki Grandy. She wants to know if you take showers or bubble baths. That's funny. Um, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I hate to be boring, but I, I mean, typically showers. I mean, a bubble bath is cool. But uh, I would, I, I probably only take one bubble bath a year, and that's usually in the winter if I'm feeling sick. Then I will do a hot, but there's nothing like a hot bath, don't get me wrong, but uh, it's normally showers. <laughs> awesome. All right, if you could do a shout-out for the radio station. Hey, what's up, all you metalheads and freaks? This is the Bastard Child in New York City, Cor Isaac, and you're listening to Thunderhead on MetalDevastation.com with Metal Rain Supreme. Hell yeah, thank you so much.